I started this on a whim 10 years ago. On the beach? On the beach, <clears throat> on the solstice. Um, it, it, it seemed a good idea to go down at sundown and, um, and, um, and light a man on fire. There, it was no more meditated th than that. I was scrapping around San Francisco uh, as a landscaper who, who had no particular uh, liking for plants. I liked hardscape. I liked lattices, pergolas, that kind of thing. We ended up building a man uh, that's uh, uh, essentially a glorified pergola. You could put a vine up into effect, uh, and, and he got way out of hand. He's four stories tall. Uh, well, let's see. I uh, was sleeping in Golden Gate Park in 1976 after hitchhiking here with uh, an arrest warrant out for myself in some unnamed central state. And uh, then I met all these weird people, and it's been ongoing ever since then. I ran into somebody uh, uh, and started, uh, started doing events with the Cacophony Society a while back, actually at its inception, I think. And then uh, we ran into uh, the Burning Man crew, Larry Harvey and Jerry James, and, uh, and their associates back in 1989 or 90. The first year we, uh, we did the event, it was kind of a conjoined Cacophony Society uh, Burning Man event out to the desert, and it's just sort of grown since then. instructions my instructions I give the instructions stop everyone that comes by demand money from them extort as much as possible so that we can try and uh, pay for what we've put out on this uh, adventure so far okay. so what's your function here burning man uh, well I have many functions I just exhibited one of my functions right there actually quite a bit of construction beforehand um, yeah quite a bit of construction went into a lot of planning um, a lot of the construction has to go has to go on on site because you can't prefab a lot and get it out here eyeglasses. See, I tried burnt cork under the eyes and stuff like that, and it didn't work. Doesn't do it. No. The glare is pretty phenomenal after a while. It gives you quite a headache. So you, is the man up already? Yeah, the man is up. He went up last night. Uh -huh. uh, they had him lit last night. Yeah. I noticed you have that loaded. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, it's just a stick if it's not loaded. Right. I mean, <laughs> I mean don't, don't be absurd. You, know? you expect any trouble out here? Is that for this? Or what? It's... Guns are fun. I don't see what the big deal is, but, you know, there's not gonna be any trouble because... Um, despite the fact there's probably over a thousand dollars in cash here, I, you know, between the two of us we have enough guns to start World War III.
Burning Man is a community, uh, much like an early frontier town. Uh, it's located in the middle of, uh, of, of nowhere. It's, it's a wilderness, it's a desert. And uh, much like a, a small growing community on the frontier, uh, there are those who step forward and take responsibility for uh, many of its uh, characteristics, uh, looking after the community. We send a survival guide out and it tells people that everyone has to bring at least uh, one gallon of water or two gallons of water per person per day. Um, we tell them, you know, how to deal with the dust storm if it comes up, uh, what kind of food they should bring. I mean, you know, nothing is out there. You've got to bring it all. It's been an amazing procedure, an amazing thing, just trying to, to keep, I mean, it's grown way past what, what I expected it was going to be at any given time. I mean, I guess I've tried not to have any expectations and, uh, and that served me quite well. Oh, we've got everyone from ranch hands to, to rocket scientists. We've got, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's really funny out there in the playa, uh, the, the categories that divide us from uh, other people just simply fall away. This thing itself was an uh, oxygen tank. What the hell's that? What's that? Oh, that was some coffee made with some gasoline. We were having. Oh, uh, was that part of the shock wave? Yeah, if you got your cameras out, I'll do another shot. Oh, sure, I'd love to see. One. What are you gonna do? Oh, I'll do another gas bomb because I got a bunch of that stuff available. It's not sure if you use. <laughs> Actually, it burns pretty slow. That's a slow one. It's got coffee made with Co gasoline all over it. Coffee made, coffee made with gasoline. Coffee made yeah, very it burns flammable. Real good. Actually, oh, that, joy, that is precious. This Jesus. Stuff is so horrible. This Ew. is like gas. It's like coffee. Gross. Aged gasoline. That's about as much as I'd want to put that in. Just in case things are quite exciting okay. enough. Okay, well, this is going to be a good one. This will be. Oh, this was a variety. This is a oh, this variety. Is oh, man. Very good. Yeah.
common dish served in all cafeterias across the country is meatloaf. Yes, that's right, meatloaf. If you take that word and hold it to a mirror, it spells the word F-A-O-L-T-A-E-M, Faultaeum, which I believe is an abbreviation for freaks, atheists, occultists, lowlifes, and two-bit agnostics eradicating morals of America. <laughs> Thank you, Teenage America, for making me what I am today. Oh, what do you have here? Well, we've been working around the clock, working around the clock to get men and women, both of them, to come together and just join hands in learning how to square dance. This is a square dancing survival guide. And if you look and you read over it, the hieroglyphics represent the fall of the Romans and the rise of the Trojans. And that's how you square dance when you put your left hand forward. A absolutely. Hi, Mom. So, what does the Burning Man mean to you? Um, mm, mud and sun. Mud and sun. Mud, sun, and fun. Thank you. Here. Hello, everybody. Can I see it through there? Sure. Look at her face. Wow, we zowie. You don't have how much latitude. Hey, how you doing? We're filming. My question is, how do you know what to put on and where? Well, you just find stuff and you put glue on its feet. And you just go, ah, and that's how you know. What kind of glue? I use a marine grade adhesive called goop. My personal goop. I like to say that there's a continuum that leads from the odd to the, to the strange, to the weird, to the, the holy other. And, and, and it's, a, it's, a, it's, a pro, it's, it's a process whereby you take things out of context. If something is weird, it's something it doesn't fit in. If something is strange, uh, it, it, it's 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 very it's it, it, it's unexplainable. If something is is weird, its very existence is unexplainable. There's there's nothing around it to define it. Uh, if, if we we go a little further, we go from the odd to the strange to the weird to the holy other. When something is holy other, it 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 can't be compared with any other thing. Its very identity seems to just shine out of it. the camera obscura and the idea was captured by Krista Monterey who built the pyramid on top of the original camera obscura that this was copied from at San Francisco behind the cliff house called the giant camera it's been there for 40 years and this one took three years to develop and uh, two years ago they decided to bring it up here so it was prefabricated and brought up here in pieces and, uh, and then built here it shows the whole area magnified on a giant screen. It rotates in a circle and gives you a beautiful view. Oh, I gotta go in there. Go ahead. Right the weather's really nice, too. I really like the weather. Hey, Eric, you swabbing the deck? Oh, yeah, you know, it's just like a real damn boat. You take your friends on a cruise and you get back to the port. They all disappear. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, that's what the aliens from outer space eat. You know, you can tell who the aliens are by the junk food that they eat with all the chemicals and stuff. That's that's alien food, man. I, I hunt aliens, man. <laughs> that's not an inflated woman you have up there, is it? Oh, no, we wouldn't have an inflatable woman up there. Okay. Just wanted to make, we're just checking to make sure. It'd be sexist. Broads don't like it when you get sexist. When are you setting sail? When there's enough wind to move the beast. We cook four whole turkeys in this thing, man. Wow. Yeah, on the barbecue. Where are you guys from? Reno. Reno. So this is a PVC can. Yeah. Are there instructions available for this? For sale or anything? <laughs> no, it's make your own from the hardware store. Potato. Potato. Kids, try this at home. I think these are going to be on the... Uh, <laughs> on the list of deadly weapons in California pretty soon. 
Can you imagine a president assassinated with a potato? <laughs> <laughs> this is regular propane, you just give it a little squirt. Yeah. You put a potato through a half inch piece of wood? Yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Is there a big call for that? <laughs> wow. Does this work this with all ammo or just Miller beer? Early launch. Uh, you have to pick actually, a true really favorite. Launch. We're going to show you the igniter that's inside the beer can. Yeah. All right, here we this go. This could be a handy. <laughs> Whoa. There were things called mystery cults. They were essentially uh, uh, all grafted onto prehistoric uh, uh, for, uh, fertility cults from the ancient agrarian times. They were party religions. Mardi Gras and, 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 uh, and Carnival are, have come down to us through that lineage. What we do is actually pretty parallel uh, to, to what they did. Uh, it, they were essentially, uh, Aristotle wrote about them. He said that they weren't about a teaching so much as an experience. This is going to be human spontaneous combustion theater. Sort of subhuman, but we got colored lance work. Lots of firecrackers. I was just saying that when I was a kid, we always we always considered it a waste to just light fireworks in the street and let them go. We always felt like you had to, you know, sacrifice a few of those models on your shelf or a toy or something. They had to do something.
What does Burning Man mean to me? Yes. This. This right here. This is what Burning Man is all about. Community helping each other out and giving a spontaneous hair washing when needed or anything else that that needs to be done. Mm. Excellent. I agree. mechanic st james and something breaks i'm there right my face is in the exhaust pipe it's, my hands are in the carburetor i'm all around that manifold i'm right there there's no battery you can't battery without my battering i mean you know boom there i am <laughs> on our interactions with the local folks, um, once they could see the whites of our eyes, uh, and that had, a, that, that had a lot to do with the fact that a no large number of the folks in our contingent are, uh, are recreational shooters, and that was something that many of the people in this area of Nevada can relate very strongly to. So initially they see this group of really strange weirdos coming out from San Francisco. Then they see that we've got a fairly healthy contingent of, uh, of sharpshooters with, uh, with bolt action rifles who can hit moving targets at 200 yards and that was something that I think uh, a lot of the folks out there related to and, and broke the ice, so to speak. Uh, and, uh, and, a lot of the, and a lot of the folks would come out to our drive-by shooting range and the golf skeet range and participate in, in those particular events. And it gave them a way of relating to this really huge group of people who, uh, you know, were extremely strange, but really when you look at it, not much stranger than uh, the people out in northern Nevada either. A lot more in common than, uh, than any of us might have thought at the outset. Good, I was shooting, out of the, hey. shooting through the passenger window in my pacer, I was able to bag the targets more than half the time. What, black the glass? <laughs> no, no. Oh, what, while driving? While driving with a black powder revolver. Yeah, it's, it's, if you can keep all the windows down and, yeah, well, pacer's got a lot of glass. That'd be yeah. a good one to yeah, drive by out of. Well, you see, the idea is, you know, yeah, the way, way things are going, this is urban self-defense. We've got to learn how to defend ourselves by, by being able to retaliate. Oh, you can't ourselves. ride shotgun on this range? Oh, sure, you go over there, okay. I mean, show up, somebody will hand you a gun. Oh, fuck, right, I got shotgun. so many guns. I... The point is this. <laughs> oh, we're going to fuck them up tomorrow, man. Be there. <laughs> we got room for two in the back of this truck here. We can go as is without cutting the tarp loose. Where are we headed? With these? We're heading out to the drive-by shooting range. Huh? Where we're going to drive by things and shoot them. Excellent. As you might well expect. Don't try this at home. No, no don't try this at home. No, the neighbors won't like it. Everybody is after Barney. I mean, he is, Barney is the one that's gonna get zapped. Exit one, man. Exit one. <laughs> Exit one. <laughs> that's skeet. Uh, that's skeet. Your smaller too. load. Uh -huh. These grazing things come from your <laughs> rifles. That we blew an eye off. There's some more bird shot in there. Complete eye loss. <laughs> Ripped it clean off. Hey, <laughs> blew it out the back of his head. There's your entry. There's your exit. Can... There's a hole right through the pole. See the problem with these plush toys. Body is they kind of heal, you know. Yeah. It's kind of hard to track your your uh, your uh, mark on the thing unless it's already completely penetrated. Well, they do have to last all weekend, so. It is important that they have like lasting ability. Yeah. I think he only got hit like once or twice, maybe. 
don't see any real serious injury going on there. Let's give it to him right Step there. Out of there. Blast him. Fuck it up at point oh, blank. Fuck, fuck it up at point blank. Right, right, close range, Barney death. Sir, let me get, let me get in on this one. Quincy reports death by multiple gunshot wounds, I think. Exactly. What would you tell the average uh, person out there who wants to buy a firearm today, today's world? You need some stuffed animals to shoot. Hurry! You really do. If you don't have any stuffed animals, you're, you're really out of luck. Our community is incredibly well behaved. Uh, we don't really have much crime at all. Uh, and that's a function of, of the fact that A, people are free to be entirely themselves, and, and, uh, and, and, and secondly, that they, they look around them and, 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 and regard their, their fellow humans in, on this lunar, in this lunar landscape where, where uh, suddenly, you know, being a, a, a living bag of water seems like a very precious and, and important thing, and, and you feel a, a, a lot in common with your fellow human beings. Uh, it's, uh, no, we're morally benign. We don't do bad things. We don't like the devil. The devil, the devil could come out. The devil, the devil could come out, in fact. Uh, uh, we've never... We've never excluded anybody from the playa. We're completely inclusive. Uh, so the devil would be well. He'd have to behave himself while he was there, uh, you know. But perhaps we learn something about him in the process, and, and that might be good for us. Hi. What does Burning Man mean to you? Burning Man. Burning Man. Burning Man. Is what it means. Where is Enigma in the commercialism of next year's Burning Man? That's what Burning Man means to me. Thank you very much. <laughs> Say it to your brother! Asshole, asshole! Sing it to someone you love! I'm Dale Scott. I'm Dale, well, you, oh, you were one of the firefighters then we saw last. I was the firefighter. You were the firefighter. Fire. Fire. Okay, so the only firefighter. <laughs> That's correct. I had the impression there were like five or six. Maybe you were just. Uh, no, there were other people in costume, but uh, I was the only one in the um, unofficial capacity, shall we say. I so. up. But the safety of all these people is is in your hands in many ways. Well, as best as I can do, you know, given the circumstances and the help of other people. Well, last night, uh, people were very cooperative. People were very cooperative. Yeah. You you were very you know cool and calm and mannerly. It wasn't like riot control. No, yeah. Thanks. No. <laughs> it's a thin line. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure. Uh, tell us a little bit about the well, building from a, scratch. Have, okay, well, we started out prefabricating it in South San Francisco. It's in five main pieces, the head, the torso, the arms, and the legs, and we disassemble it. I mean, we assemble the modules, then we bring it out, and then we reassemble the modules and put the knee on. You may know that we had it erected and put in a gallery on, uh, in San Francisco on Market Street, off of Market Street, called Somar. And it was a pretty awesome sight to see this thing inside a building. Well, the situation uh, that we're trying to uh, actually trying to achieve here is just having a, a temporary community that uh, uh, has such an amount of freedom for people uh, 
pretty difficult to, difficult to explain. I, mean, I suppose you've been taking a lot of footage out here and seeing people do do things you wouldn't normally see them do Absolutely. anywhere else. Yeah. Uh, with the exception, generally, of uh, destructive or uh, violent things. Although we, 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 we get our violent uh, activity out on inanimate objects, as you'll see tonight. I, I see this as a project wherein a team comes together and we've worked on this since January. We build it. We go through all the heartaches and the blood, sweat, and tears of, of getting this out here, creating it, and then we let it go. It's been an organic progression. I mean, we didn't really plan to do this at the outset, but it sort of happened that way. One of the reasons the event is still, is still occurring is because people come here and see that they can really do something interesting or creative or really outrageous. Since we're becoming a little bit commercial, maybe, we have a barcode now. Oh, really? Yeah, we have official Burning Man barcode. And uh, just for safety reasons, we have a smoke detector. That's just uh, from the Buckaroo Bonsai movie. That was the uh, Society of Alien Engineers. So, so Buckaroo Bonsai is really your hero there. Yeah, he's, he's one of my fictional heroes. There's just a lot of, uh, it's silly, but there's a lot of parallel. So my band is called Rocket Science, that's what I'm doing these days. Okay. Just finished a record and we're, John and I live in San Francisco, we've got a, about a 7,000 square foot place all right. in the south of Market. Let's try it. We're going to do all kinds of, there we go. Hey, take your motorcycle out there, will you? It's not enough to be weird anymore.
there on the playa and everyone what what everyone is inherently in themselves seems to be just radiating out of them because there isn't any context around them to, to limit or jacket or or, or 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 make them less than what they simply and innately are and and uh, uh, the man at the end is a vision of that is this giant figure suffused in flames uh, uh, the, 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 the pure and simple evidence of his own being, uh, unmediated and undefined. Last 
this! We had uh, corn on the cob. We had, um, uh, well, um, little uh, little marbles of clay. They were pretty good with a white sauce. And um, uh, melted glass with hollandaise. It's, uh, it's a delicious, it's a French kind of thing. That's what's left. A good wind and rain, and there'll be nothing left of this. Are you members of the band? Yeah, hi. We're Sharkbait. Hi. Really? We're Sharkbait. Hi. We love. Yeah! Check 